What's up everybody, Chris with South Carolina Gun School and today uh, we're going to talk about, uh, I guess you could say 10 mistakes uh, that I think a lot of uh, gun owners make, uh, maybe geared a little bit toward you know newer gun owners, uh, but these are what I feel are you know some of the big mistakes you know that are definitely made out there. Um, you have to forgive me when I look down, I've kind of made some notes on my phone and I wanted to make sure you know, this isn't anything uh, that gets missed, uh, so please forgive me if I, you know, tend to look down. But uh, it's kind of like one something that I talk about in our uh, basic firearm class, our concealed weapons course, is when you when you buy a firearm, you're making a huge step in your life because. There's, there's going to come a time where you're going to actually have to use that firearm and possibly take somebody's life. Now, a lot of people are going to say I'm cold and heartless and whatever, but I'm, I'm not going to lose any sleep at night if it's me or them. I, I'm sorry, especially when it comes to uh, family. Um, Friends, I mean, even you know somebody I don't know. If, if something bad is about to happen, I'm going to do what I need to do to protect myself and to protect others. So that's definitely something you need to sit down and and think about. I, I guess I should say eleven. Now, you know that should almost be um, number one, especially when it comes to the new gun owners and you know buying a firearm, you know, for the first time to to keep in your home or to. You know, eventually maybe get your concealed weapons permit and carry one day but there's going to come a time to where you're gonna have to take somebody's life there, there's there, there's no easy way to say it. it it's something you need to definitely sit down and prepare yourself for and especially if even if you're with your family uh, to protect your family and and, and they have to, to watch that it, it's it's not an easy thing to do um, you know, now if you're just a cold-hearted psychopath, you know, with no feelings or conscience or soul, then, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's, it's going to come easy. It's not anything that will be easy, but if you go and you do get training, it, it will compensate for it not being easy because your training will you know take over but you need to understand that I guess you we could say that's number one I, I probably need to go back in and, and add that in there you know number one is going to be you need to prepare yourself uh, to possibly take somebody's life there's, there's there's no way around it so some of the other things um, are using a cheap holster or a sling uh, I've done a video on uh, holsters already, kind of going over some different options that you have uh, with holsters. Uh, so please go back in and, and check that out if you want an idea of, you know, some good holsters. Uh, the, I hate that I don't have one here with me and I should have even done it in the video, but uh, the real, the, the cheap nylon holsters, it's got the big huge little molly thing in the back that could probably run through like eight molly loops you know those you want a good holster that's going to fit you know snug to your body or it's going to fit comfortably inside the waistband depending on you know what you want to carry or in your pocket um, any, whatever it might be you know especially sling wise when it comes to rifles you know you don't want to get a cheap sling if you're on a budget believe me I totally understand I've been there I've bought the cheap holsters I've bought the cheap slings but that was just mainly for storage or just being able to you know carry it over my shoulder whatever it might be uh, but I did eventually save up and spend the money and get a nicer sling and you know a good holster you're looking good holster wise 50 plus maybe more we'll say 65 
65 plus, you know, for a good holster. I really bought that with, with the sling, you know, probably 50, 60 plus uh, for a good sling. But if you, you're on a budget, you've got to go the cheap route just to get something to, you know, put it in or be able to throw it over your shoulder and carry it around. I understand, but save the money and eventually, you know, get the better sling, get the better holster. Like I said, I've done the video on the holster already. Uh, we're getting ready to do a video on the uh, different options as far as slings and things like that. So don't, 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 I'm not going to say don't start cheap. Don't go cheap and don't start cheap and continue to stay cheap. You know, get a good holster, get a good sling. That, that's really going to be uh, the most important thing. Let's see, what's the next one? You know, going out and getting trigger work. I understand if you want to have, you know, a lighter trigger. Is that always the best thing when it comes to uh, carrying? You know, especially for newer gun owners, it's, it's not. You know, one thing you want to do is, is learn the gun that you buy. Then start working with it from there. You know, don't automatically go buy a gun and think you've got to go get a, a lighter trigger. That, that's not the case. You need to learn what you buy. If you can master that, then having other things done are only going to make it better. But don't automatically go out, you know, and, and get a light trigger job. You know, especially if you're not 100% sure on exactly how you need to be manipulating that trigger. Because it... A lighter trigger, depending on how you draw, uh, when it comes to handguns, can be very, 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 very dangerous because you're only making it less pressure where that trigger needs to be engaged. So if you're not comfortable with how you're drawing your gun out of your holster, don't go and start getting trigger jobs done. Now, if you've got a certain gun you want to go buy and you want to have all this work done to it and make it into this awesome competition gun, that's fine, but that's not something that I would really recommend carrying if you're going to be carrying or having as your very first gun. You know, go find a good find a good gun. Most of your guns now have decent triggers on. Um, if you're not going to be doing any competition shooting, I really don't see you know too many reasons on you know, why you would want to do that starting out. As you grow and you get more experience with it, then start making modifications and changes to it to what you want don't go and listen to me or whoever because the way i might want my trigger is going to be totally different than the way you want yours find what works for you and going into the next one is you know don't replace don't replace your skills uh, with you know accessories and things like that make sure you're going and, and learning and understanding the fundamentals. Then again, like back to the trigger, start making modifications from there. You know, changing out your sights. You know, getting this red dot over that red dot, or these iron sights over those iron sights, or anything like that. Learn the gun that you buy, then start making the modifications. Uh, going, these, as you can kind of see, they kind of lead into one another is forgetting the fundamentals or not learning the fundamentals. Learn the fundamentals before you start making changes. Learn the fundamentals before you start anything at all. Triggers, sights, open, uh, you know, opening up the mag wells at the bottom. Uh, flared mag wells, you know, making modifications to the slide and spring and learn the gun that you buy. Learn the fundamentals before you start making modifications. Uh, another thing that's definitely big, and again, that's why I say can, the gun owners, yes, the newer gun owners, but gun owners in general, is not securing your firearms. Now, are every one of my guns secured and locked up somewhere? No, because I do keep one next to the nightstand. It's in a holster, uh, but it is, you know, it's not locked up. 
I don't care what you say. If your kids, if you work with your kids, um, that's going to be some things we'll get into. I'm not going to get too much off on a tangent, you know, and, and let them understand, you know, what guns are and what can happen. You know, you don't have to have every single one secure. Now, when my daughter has friends over, yes, I take all my firearms and they are locked up in a safe where nobody can get to them. Uh, because you don't know how other people are going to be with their kids being around guns. Um, so just, you know, lock them up. Lock all of them up. Don't leave any of them out. Lock them up. Another thing is, you know, not really understanding your ammunition. Uh, the big one is your 9mm. You've got your standard 9mm Luger, which is the majority of your firearms. And then you've got some out there that are the... Uh, and I'm sure some troll out there is going to correct me or pick at me, but it's uh, 9mm Makarov, Makinoff, I, I can't remember. A lot of people will get those confused just because they think 9mm is 9mm. That's not the case. The majority of them, if it says just 9mm on the side of the gun, it's going to be a Luger, 9mm Luger. Uh, the other is the, the, the 9mm macker off and it'll actually have that on the box and everything. Uh, your 40s, 45s, sometimes people get confused. You know, they see the 4 and they grab the boxes. Um, you just got to be very careful. Make sure you do understand your ammunition, especially uh, for some of the newer ones. I, I wouldn't recommend automatically, you know, starting out, you know, buying a gun and reloading. You know, understand the weapon, understand the ammunition. Then it goes back to you know, learn what you learn the gun as it is. Same thing with the ammunition. Then start you know playing with it from there. Um, other things are you know like buying the wrong firearm. You know, go like with us. We offer the basic firearm. If you don't know what you want, we've got a couple of different options. Um, different calibers so you can kind of see you know what's out there uh, and I know another great place is Palmont State Armory just about every gun they sell you can go and rent it on their range and try it out so if you're not really sure I'm sure there's other places um, I don't know, know Palmont State Armory is right here in South Carolina I'm sure there's other places other gun shops gun ranges that you know will let you you know try their firearms out um, I'm not saying they're going to go get you a brand new one out of the box and let you try it, but I'm sure they have some that they have available to rent where you can, you know, try out some different ones and see what you like. If you have that ability, go and try it out. Just, you know, I shouldn't say this, but I know some people do it. Don't just go out and walk onto a car and say, yeah, I want that car. You know, you're going to test drive the car. Uh, you know, most of your cell phones, if you go into a cell phone store, they've got them out on display. Computers where you can mess with them a little bit. You know, a gun is no different. If you have the ability, go and try it out before you buy it to make sure it's going to work for you. Because you might say, oh yeah, I want a 45. If you've never shot a 45, there's a lot of recoil in a 45. I know some people that will say there's a lot of recoil in a 9mm. So go try out different calibers, try out different excuse me, try out different guns, find what feels good in your hand, in your arms, on your shoulder, whatever it might be, and try it out. <laughs> this is, sometimes I think, again, it's not just new gun owners, but this was something I, I felt is, is missed a lot, or I guess, you know, done a lot but relying on you know the safety of the gun these guns are made by humans humans are not perfect these are your number one safeties depending on what hand dominance or what hand you have the uh, gun in this is always your number look number one this is always your number one safety this is always your number one safety I don't care about what all the firearm, this lock and that lock and there and here and over there. These are always your number one safeties. Always. Always. Don't rely on the manual safety. 
They're made by people. They can malfunction. I've watched videos where tons of guns, the safeties have malfunctioned. I'm not saying that they're dangerous or a bad thing as long as you remember this is your number one safety. Look, number one. This is your number one safety. Only time this goes into there is when you're ready to shoot. Every other time it should be just like that. Number one down the side of the gun. Well, why people forget that? This is your number one safety. And this is something sometimes I see in some of the classes is improper gun maintenance. You know, you need to clean your guns. Now, some people would say I might be a hypocrite when it comes to that statement because some of my guns, it has been a while since some of them have been clean. But as long as you, I guess you could say, give them a good field cleaning, take it apart, wipe it down some, get some of the grime off, put a little oil, or I me, mean, I like frog lube, put a little frog lube on it. As long as you keep it lubricated and somewhat clean. I'm not saying sit there with a toothbrush and do that. Field strip it, take a rag, wipe it off, put some fresh oil or some fresh frog lube or whatever you might want to use and you'll be fine. Nothing at all and then you start running four, five, six hundred rounds, you're going to start to have issues. That's when you're going to start to have double feeds and a failure to ejection, stove pops, and things like that. It's improper maintenance. Maintain your gun. And then, the big thing of them all, especially when it comes to the newer owners, you know, <laughs> the complacency with you know, experienced owners, it, it happens. I've seen it happen, I've heard about it happening. Do not forget the four safety rules, which are treat every gun like it was loaded. Finger straighten off the trigger till you're ready to fire. Don't point your gun at anything you don't intend to shoot. Know your target what's beyond it. Those four apply to all firearms. Probably even knives and things like that sometimes. But never forget those. If you're going to start teaching your kids, make them memorize those four safety rules. When it came to my daughter before she got her first gun, took a dry erase board, wrote all those rules down, you got to memorize these. So Santa came, brought her her new first, or her new gun, her first gun, uh, which was a little pink Cricket 22, and now she has all moved up to a, uh, a Ruger 1022. Every time we come out, as we're coming out here to shoot, what are the four safety rules? Now there were times when she was first learning, and I kind of not really gave her the answer, but led her into the right answer. You know, I'm not saying if they don't know, they don't go, but make sure they understand. Now, she, she knows how to load the mags on the 1022. She'll put them in there, she'll go down there, she'll shoot. She keeps the gun pointed in the safe direction. So as long as you teach your kids the proper safety rules and the proper handling, they're going to be fine. But let's go back through and we're just going to kind of recap what we went over. So again, it's, remember it's not 10. We're going to add uh, an 11th in, in there, but to start out, mindset know that you're going to have to take a life one day with that firearm. Don't use a cheap holster, don't use a cheap sling. If you have to start there, that's fine, but build up to a good sling and a good holster. We're going to just put two and three together, which were don't get a light trigger job right away. Don't replace the skills with accessories. Learn the fundamentals, learn the firearm as it is, then change from there. Again, forgetting or not learning the fundamentals. If you don't take some kind of class, not a CWP, that's not what I'm saying. CWP class is good to understand, learn the fundamentals and all that, and all the legal stuff, 
but you need to take more than just a CWP class. Whether it be an intro class, one of our fighting classes, going into even one of the tactical classes. If it's not us, go somewhere and get training. I don't care who you are. When I got out of service, I still went and I took classes from schools. So just, just because you've been around firearms all your life doesn't mean you know how to exactly fight with that weapon. When I was in service, it was mainly the rifle. That was, that was where everything was. It was your rifle. Your, your, your sidearm was a, a last resort. Very, very last resort. Yes, we had to qualify with them, but we didn't get the training with the handgun that we got with the rifle. So I did take other courses to learn more and feel more comfortable with the handgun. Go and get some type of training. Not securing the firearm. If it's not, I'm not saying you got to buy a big two, three thousand dollar safe that can sit in a 1200 degree fire for four hours. That's not what I'm saying. Get something and lock it up or use what comes with it. Majority of your firearms now come with some type of locking. Most of them are the big cable locks to run down through the slide, down through the magwell and lock it up. Make sure you understand the ammunition and the different types of ammunition that are out there. Try out the gun before you buy it. That's how most people end up in the wrong firearm. They go in, they start listening, and I'm not saying that the people that are selling the guns don't know what they're talking about. Yes, there probably are some that don't know what they're talking about, but that's not the majority of them. They're going off of what you're telling them. What you're telling them might not actually be what's going to feel comfortable in your hand. So if you have the opportunity, try the firearm out before you buy it. This is your number one safety. See? See? That's your number one safety. Don't rely on the manual safety. This is always your number one safety. Right here. That pretty little finger right there. See the number one. This is your number one safety. Maintain the gun. Clean the gun. Now, does that mean every time you go shoot the gun, clean it? No. That's not what that means. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. That's not what that means. So with my guns, I've probably ran seven, eight, maybe even a thousand rounds through it before they get clean. But those are ones I use in the class. Anything that's been stored for a while, you need to clean it before you go out and shoot it. Make sure everything looks good on. Maintain your gun. Not every single day, not every single time you shoot, some maintenance needs to be done. I know the, I think the NRA standard says uh, at least once a month. You, as you get experience, you will learn your firearm. I can run the, the, my Glock 23, and I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, Glock, Glock this, Glock, Glock that. You know, Glock, Sig, Smith, there, there's tons of great firearms out there. You're all going to run across similar issues with each one. I know other people are going to come on here. Eventually, you're going to have some issues with the gun as long as you have improper maintenance. You properly maintain the gun. It's usually just going to be some, you know, maybe shitty ammo here or there. Last, remember your four safety rules, which are, yeah, I'm waiting on you. Treat every gun like it was loaded. Don't point your gun at anything you don't intend to shoot. Finger straighten off the trigger till you're ready to fire. Know your target what's beyond it. Always remember those four. Applies to all firearms. So, again, these are the mistakes that I've seen made with a little bit more newer gun owners and sometimes experienced gun owners. If you go through and you remember not to make these mistakes, you're going to be just fine. So I hope this helps everybody. You know, um, if you have any questions, reach out to us. Our contact information is on the website. And always remember, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Trained to live. See you on the range.